Hey guys and welcome to a new video. Today I want to bring you the last update on my accuracy stacking project, the follow-up video to my 100% delirious run that I've uploaded I think two days ago. And uh, yeah, today I want to cover the most um, like frequently asked questions as well as my final choices and I also want to explain why I did certain things uh, so if you want to plan uh, or if you plan to play an accuracy stacker as well uh, or maybe next week probably I will do the same um, so I can probably teach you some things that I learned uh, with the progress throughout the character so I personally uh, like I just unequip my entire character and I want to uh, set everything together and then explain why certain pieces of gear, uh, what are other versions um, as well as why did I f not pick those uh, or at least why I took for example the replica shot of the lightless over an explode chest with like additional curse base crit and so on. Good. Uh, first of all I would say we, sh we start with some frequently asked questions. Um, the first thing that I get asked on stream like all the time why accuracy stacking? What are the benefits of accuracy stacking? And yeah, I did explain that those kind of things uh, pretty often already in the f in the past videos, but I just want to make one final uh, roundup video about accuracy stacking. So I'm going to answer this one uh, again. I made here a list on what do we get, let's say 1000 accuracy. So these are every time we get accuracy it's not only about the 100 percent hit chance that we're going to have it's more about the item combination that we're going to use um as well as the new ritual base boots the storm rider boots that gives us flat damage so we do get for every accuracy or on a certain accuracy threshold like uh, for example the ascendancy of juggernaut which is basically the only thing the only big reason why do we actually go juggernaut over any other class and why is my attack speed so ridiculously high? And this is because of the undeniable note, which gives us flood accuracy and 1% increased attack speed per 150 accuracy rating and gain accuracy rating equal to twice of your strength, which is basically the dexterity note. So if we hover over dexterity, we see one dexterity gives plus two accuracy. Now with this note here, uh, our strength will also give us accuracy. Um, as well as life and melee fist damage, which is not really that interesting. But this undeniable keystone, attack speed, flag, uh, flat accuracy rating, as well as um, making our strength count as dexterity more or less as well for the flat accuracy that we're going to get. The next thing, we get uh, two times projectile attack damage per 200 accuracy. One is the, um, um, I think, Minotaur drop, which is uh, this helm over here, which is the Ops Corantis. Don't worry, guys, this is just a skin transfer, so I'm probably just going to disable all the skin transfers so you get a better understanding how these items look like. So let's just uh, pop everything into here. So let's just reclaim everything. Rip the money spent. I, I just like when uh, when all my items look like super fancy. So I'll just disable all of those. Uh, the boots over here. Belt over here. I think this belt over here. Rings doesn't have. I think the amulet was left. And we good. Good. Um, the That's all. Basically, this is the Obscurantus, which is a Minotaur drop as far as I remember. Which gives us flat accuracy rating and 1% increased projectile attack damage per 200 accuracy rating. As well as the... I think it was an Elder. No, it was an... Yeah, it was an Elder mod, as you see on the bottom side, 1% increased projectile attack damage per 200 accuracy. That means for every 200 accuracy that we now get, let's uh, put this... No, actually, let's, let's keep it on 1,000. So basically, this 5 times um, per stat, which is 10% in total, 5% uh, from the 1,000 accuracy from the helmet, and 10%, uh, 5%, sorry, uh, from the bow, and then combined, it's 10% per, uh, per 1,000 accuracy. Moving on to the Oscarm gloves, which is also pretty cheap gloves, which give me 2% increased attack critical strike chance per 200 accuracy. And this is like this is like a, a, a road you build up to. If you have low gear, if you don't have a lot of accuracy in the start, you want to take a diamond flask. Obvious reasons, we're a crit build and we're not going to uh, max out our crit strike chance, as well as maybe a bottled faith, which is kind of the more expensive one. Um, but 
just saying that you want to go for these uh, critical strike nodes, but on a certain accuracy threshold, you're actually going to reach 100% critical strike chance. So a diamond flask will become useless. For example, in my build, I'm not even using one. So at a certain accuracy threshold, I actually went with the basalt flask to make me more tanky. Then we have increased damage um, per 1000 accuracy, which is basically my divergent uh, additional accuracy support. Um, the thing why this is important, if you, um, for example, on my bow, if you take a look here, I have a crafted quality of socket gems, which you might think is a prefix craft, which is kind of garbage. There is other ones that are better, which is not correct in this regard, just because if we have 8% at a 22% quality, so you corrupt those, uh, we get up to 30%, which means we're not going to get 4% attack damage. We're going to get 6% attack damage, which is not really good. But uh, comparing, if you reach like 60, 70, 80,000 accuracy, that's a lot of damage. Just like, I don't know, like 300% uh, increased damage, which is more than any other support gem will give you. Plus the flat accuracy and all that kind of things. Oh, this is actually sold. D&D &D clear. Sorry, always forget. So, just uh, for the explanation, the divergent additional accuracy will also give us damage per accuracy. And then we have the boots, which is kind of the build enabler, because all the other things will give us attack speed, projectile damage, crit strike chance, and so on. But this, the boots, will actually give us the flat damage that we need to make our uh, some very um, good DPS over here, right? So if we sum this up, let's say we have 25,000 accuracy, right? We would get over 166% increased attack speed through the ascendancy. Then we have um, a 250% increased projectile damage from the uh, Ops Corantis and the Elder uh, mod on the bow. Then we have 250% increased critical strike chance from the Oscarm gloves. We have 150% um, increased total damage from our divergent accuracy. So you see that that stat is actually really good. And then we have 125 to 750 flat lightning damage coming from our Storm Rider boots. So this is just the explanation. What is accuracy stacking? Why do we do it? Um, how do I get so much attack speed? How do I get so much damage? Good. Then let's uh, go over all the, peer, uh, the gear pieces, I would say, and why those choices. So first of all, um, we're going to start with uh, what can I equip? So the Oscar gloves, as I said, the base critical strike chance, as well as some global accuracy rating and actually an assassin's mark on hit. Um, gems we're going to go over later. Uh, for the quiver, I basically just have like everything that is rare is actually accuracy, percent accuracy, everything that gives you um, quality of life on your build as well as accuracy. The more, the better. So one thing I want to mention um, right away, the best skills for accuracy stacking. I personally found out Frenzy is the best... Um, boss killing ability is like hilarious amounts of damage if you uh, if you maybe uh, watched my 100 maven kills um i had like on friends here with 50 million single target dps like maven just disappeared uh then um Cyrus and awakener 9 doesn't even teleport in the last phase before he's dead so it's ridiculous damage but uh, on the other hand I would say those are actually the only three that I would think are viable, which is Tornado Shot, which is Frenzy, which is Ballista Totems. I want to mention this Ballista Totems. I have not uh, done any footage of this one. I tried it out. It's insane. And this is actually probably going to be my leak starter. So Ballista Totem Accuracy Stacking next leak, uh, because I think the entrance cost is a lot lower than on attack based builds. Um, and I think it's overall like very, very solid and strong until it gets to a certain currency threshold where you can play something like Tornado Shot. So um, I would say Frenzy only for bosses because it sucks at clearing. The reason for that is um, you need two setups. For example, when I play Tornado Shot, I don't need an expo chest. My clear is ridiculous. Um, the GMP, for example, is giving me single target damage as well because more projectiles is more damage for single target as well as for clearing. And if you play with Frenzy, you need two Frenzy setups. One should be your single target, which is Frenzy, Barrage, and stuff like that. And the other one needs to be like Frenzy, GMP, Chain, Fork, anything um, that makes your clearing better, um, as well as an Expo chest, because otherwise it will, it will feel like trash. And the problem is the Replica Shroud of the Lightless is such an insane damage gain um, that... Any other expo chest, whatever, will just be trash. Um, for the showcase here, um, I'm just going to open up my PUB. This is the current version that I here have equipped, right? And we look at like 8.4 million or 8.3 million 
um, DPS from Tornado Shot, this is per projectile. So if I have like 10 projectiles, it's like over 80 million DPS, which is ridiculous. So now we're gonna do a simple thing. We're gonna unequip the replica shroud and we're gonna go from 8.4 to 4.8 million DPS. And then we're gonna um, unequip the Dark Sister Throne. Um, and we're gonna go down to 4.1 or 4.2 million DPS. So that means the, just the belt and the um, replica shroud will actually um, double my DPS, which is way, way better than any exploit chest with base crit and additional curse will ever bring me, right? And for Tornado Shot, I don't even need a separate single target. And if I go Ballister Totems, I just need to have a Barrage set up for single target. And if I'm map clearing or 100% Delirious, I'm just gonna use the... Um, Great multiple projectiles instead of barrage setup, and I'm fine, you know? So everything that runs on one six link is way better just because we can use a replica shroud of the lightless. So, um, good. The belt doesn't have a big DPS increase just because I have some chaos resistance stuff uh, into my uh, belt at the moment, the abyss jewels, just because so I can use divine flesh at some point. Good. Let's equip uh, the items. So as I said, the quiver is just like accuracy, life, chaos resistance. Additional arrow is like super good for tornado shot since we're a bow based character and alley damage with attacks just because we're a pure elemental based build. Um, and one thing I want to mention here as well is why do I not use any melee skills with it? And I think bow build is the way to go. First of all, the elder mod on the bow that doesn't exist on a two handed weapon. And I think that bow in general is a way more solid uh, projectile based um, archetype to build around. It does work with projectiles uh, for melee skills like frost blades and uh, lightning strike and stuff like that. But I think the bow version is just a lot stronger. Uh, good, then we have as next uh, the Obscurantis, as I said. Uh, we're just gonna unequip this one here so I can actually equip that. Um, as I said, a lot of accuracy rating um, and projectile attack damage. If you want to go for pure ninja warrior, you would want to have the um, ice golem buff effect because the flat accuracy or the percent accuracy was the ice golem gives uh, is like insane. Good, next on the list, uh, the bow, as I said. This is all about the Elder Shaper here with uh, the flood accuracy, attack speed, uh, projectile attack damage, and socketed uh, deal 20% more attack damage, which is basically a 7 link in this regard. So let me just unequip here. There is some intelligence missing. Oh, we're just going to make it the easy way uh, so I can leave the gems in. Um, for the intelligence problem, there's like two big things that we have to solve in a skill tree, which is resistance and which is intelligence. We don't have any intelligence at all. And that's why I decided to go with a fertile mind on this cluster here, uh, which gives us like almost like 90 uh, intelligence, which pretty much solves all of our intelligence problems. As I said, gems we're going to go over in a bit. Let me quickly equip all of that. So, uh, 126. There is still some intelligence missing. I think I have crafted it on my chest, which is true. So, we're just going to unequip that one real quick. God damn it, dude. So, now I have to take the intelligence, equip the chest, and now we can actually regret it again just because now the chest will actually give me 14 intelligence since I have 20, uh, 28% quality on it, which gives me 14 intelligence. And now we can basically just refund that point and we will be fine. Good. Next item slot, as I said, the Darkness and Throne. Um, it, this is a plug and play Headhunter build, right? So if you want to play with Headhunter, just use it and equip it. There is no stat requirements built in just because the Darkness and Throne doesn't have stats either, unless my uh, Abyssals have those. Um, but therefore, we don't have any, so as long as I'm Captain Strength, Xerid, Intelligence, whatever, I can just use my Headhunter, and if I'm like done with 100% Delirious and I want to go for bosses, I'm just going to use the Darkness and Throne instead. So, put that one back in. Good. So, the next thing is the uh, Boots. Um, I choose to go with Chaos Resistance, Abyssal Socket, just because I did not need the uh, Resistance there, because I fixed that on my uh, skill tree. So, there is a thing... Tailwind Elusive, yes or no? I would say yes and no. I picked this version just because of the additional pierces, which makes the Tornado Shot clear a lot better. And then we have Elusive and Tailwind. Both are elevated. Doesn't have to be, but hey. No, wait. Actually, tail, uh, Elusive is not elevated, but it's like not very too uh, big of a difference. Elusive gives you a lot of tankiness um, because of all the dodge and movement speed and stuff. And Tailwind is um, increased action speed, which means more movement speed, attack speed, and all the good stuff. But I personally... Um, was thinking about making a second pair with Shaper just to get me ailment, uh, avoid, uh, like ailment immune, right? Because, um, we're Juggernaut. That means we're stun immune and we're freeze immune, uh, through the unstoppable, um, ascendancy node, right? But the thing is, 
when I died in this character, I usually was shocked. And that's why I say, like, maybe ailment avoidance would have been the way to go, especially nowadays, since we have the elevated um, Shaper mod, which gives you 50% uh, avoid elemental ailments. Then we would get 20% of the thick skin cluster, and then you would just pop in a small cluster jewel with elegant form for the rest of the 30%, and then you would be ailment immune. I think this gives you another big layer of defense. Good. Next on the list, the Amulet, which is a pretty generic one. I choose to go with a synthesized one with the implicit 18 life for each enemy hit by your attacks. I think we did, with that insane attack speed that we have, I think that uh, life gain on hit is like the superior choice over leech, over reach, and all that kind of things. And these 18% is fair enough to just uh, make me like almost unkillable as long as I'm attacking something, as long as I don't get one-shotted. Um, basically here, lightning damage to attacks, accuracy, life, multiplier, chaos rest, alley damage with attacks, pretty generic as on any other uh, rare item over here. Then for the rings, um, I think there is nothing better than precursor rings. Um, Frenzy stacking on this build, Frenzy gives you generic damage, right? More damage. So, and every Frenzy will now give me accuracy per Frenzy charge. And this stat is actually the best one. And uh, the best would be the triple accuracy per frenzy charge with the catalyst it would be 36 percent that means i think at the moment i run eight frenzy charges and that means um i get here times 24 which is like per frenzy charge i get 24 percent uh, accuracy rating which means 192 i have two times this ring which means as soon as i uh, hit the uh, maximum amount french charges which is eight i get like almost 400 percent increased global accuracy rating and that is a noticeable difference as soon as i hit uh, this cap that my damage just goes absolutely through the roof um as well as one max frenzy charge over here and this one has onslaught uh well maximum frenzy charges which is pretty good because it's onslaught on hit and that also enables the belt enchantment which is accuracy while you have onslaught Good. Next on the list is, um, yeah, pretty much nothing. This is our entire gear, and you're going to see that you ha will have a big problem based on resistance. So the only rare items that I'm using do have chaos resistance, chaos resistance, chaos resistance, and that's it. Unique, 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 unique. Doesn't have res everywhere, uh, anywhere. So the big problem is I do need resistance. So one good thing is at least the precursor rings have double 30% resistance. Otherwise, as you see, it would be a minus 14 on all the spots. Um, so that's the reason why I actually go with these kind of jewels here that have like increased life, all res, and far lightning. Since I don't need the cold res, since I have them on the rings, I can actually cap out my resistance on that one, which is not really a nice way to fix your resistance, but it has to be just because I cannot really get the resistance on the gear. So the way I did that was just putting in a, a, a voices jewel over here to get me as many jewel slots as possible. And trust me that jewel slots is the best way. And you may be wondering now, uh, yo, you have a one voice passive cost like freaking two mirrors. This is true. But do you need uh, that? No, you don't. As long as you're not level 100, you don't need any of those. And in the end, you have, you're have you just going for jewel slots. Like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, um, 7, 8. Like the more jewel slots, the better. And the more voices, the better at all, right? In one hand, you can fix your resistance. And in the other hand, this is pure damage with all the accuracy, multiplier, life, and lightning damage to bow attacks which is insane. And that's also the reason why Replica Shroud of the Lightless is so insane. So overall, you, uh, the best way would be using, I don't know, like freaking 100 Abyss Jewels if possible. So now let's take a look. All of these have all res and Fire Lightning. Uh, it means I'm almost capped. Um, so I have, I think, one more uh, was over here. And then I'm almost like done. Uh, and the rest is basically just um, pure damage jewels. So let's talk about the Abyss jewels. I do actually um, buy all the synthesized jewels that I could find. I still have like a couple more over here that still uh, needs to be crafted or whatnot. Um, and here I want to precisely com uh, co uh, compare actually. Let's do those two jewels. So this one has life, lightning damage to bow attacks in the best case here it's one attack because i'm still rerolling and uh, remove at lightning so they are pretty much the same the only difference here is this one has increased accuracy rating if you haven't killed recently while this one has global multiplier so um this one will give you shit tons of dps and i mean a lot of lot a lot of dps so the thing is as long as i haven't killed i have 30 percent increased accuracy and if you multiply this by like 10 or 15 jewels that's like like another 400% increased accuracy rating, which is ridiculous. Problem is, when I play Tornado Shot or uh, Frenzy or anything like that, as soon as I kill something, I'm going to lose all of that. And I want to have a build that is like really strong 
uh, whatever it's like conditional, like if I have killed something or not. And that's why I went with a multiplier as good as possible, because this will be there on bosses. If I've killed recently, if I'm going for 100% delirious maps or whatever, you know, this one would work if I do Saurus or Maven or something, because there is nothing, uh, or at least a Maven, there are some ads, but in the end, um, if you have killed recently is for the past four seconds. So while the blob moves inside or outside, whatever, um, you're going to have this um, active as soon as Maven gets active again. This is something, this is a stat that you want to use on Ballister Totem because if the totems kill, it's not you have killed. So that means this will uh, be active all the time. I usually have those two here. I have two with accuracy and percent accuracy. Those are my jewels that I have in my belt because this is my swap out belt for bosses. So that's totally fine to have those in there. The rest here is pretty much generic generic, accuracy, multi, life, and damage. And this is like every single jewel has those stats. The most priority here is accuracy, then life, then um, I would say multiplier probably, and then the last flat lightning damage. And I just have all of those jewels uh, are just maximum on those, right? Um, there is one difference here. I have here two jewels that have chaos resistance because I needed those to get a uh, chaos rest cap for divine flesh. That's why I have those jewels in my belt because it's 75% increased. So I'm getting shit tons of um, chaos resistance over here. Uh, then we have the rest ones. I think we're just somewhere laying around in the uh, skill tree. As I said, the more jewels, the better. And this is a noticeable difference. And now you see I'm actually rest capped here. Um, yeah, it's almost res cap. So the next thing is, since I am able to get the Chaos res cap, I'm using a Glorious Vanity with Divine Flash, which uh, converts 50% alley damage, taking as Chaos damage. And this, um, as you will see over here, is a big difference in terms of survivability. So I unequip this. I have like, uh, like 90,000 uh, EHP. And as soon as I uh, use that one, I'm going up to 140,000. So basically, it's like 30-40% more tankiness just using Divine Flesh if you're able to cap your resistance. If you have lower gear, then just don't worry about it. Just get your Chaos Resistance to like zero or something that should be fine. But if you have the gear, if you have the rest jewels and stuff and you're able to get Divine Flesh, use it. It's insane. Um, the next thing is I try to cap out my resistance without Endurance Charges, so I don't want to rely on. Yes, Endurance Charges gives me less uh, damage, elemental damage taken through the Ascendancy. It gives me resistance, it gives me physical damage mitigation, but I want to be uh, capped in hideouts or wherever. Um, so I'm not like going into a map without Endurance Charges and then just get one charge just because I wasn't rest or something like that. Good. Uh, for the Watcher's Eye, basically, the only aura that we're using is Precision, so that's why I'm using a Triple Precision. Um, the last line, the last charge, is when you deal a Critical Strike chance, um, or at least when you deal a Critical Strike uh, strike chance, you get Flask Charges, which makes you a Pathfinder, pretty much. The other one, Attack Damage, Multiplier, Attack Speed, all of those are fine. This was the only Triple Precision that I found, and I paid like 200x uh, for that one. And then, uh, yeah, for the um, Flasks over here, Bottled Faith, still, I don't need the crit strike chance, but the 10% increased damage taken while enemies are on Consecrated Ground is a big, big DPS boost. The Dying Sun, um, the two additional projectiles, is both clearing and a single target for Tornado Shot. The Aetherius Promise, since we deal pure elemental damage or almost pure elemental damage, um, we basically uh, get a lot of extra Chaos damage and some Leech. Then uh, Physical Damage Mitigation with Curse Immunity and also a Quick Silver Flask just to be even faster. In 100% Delirious maps, you can actually opt out for like a Silver Flask or uh, this, what is it? The one flask that gives you Facing and do uh, Dodge, Spell Dodge and Attack. I think like it's a Quartz Flask or something like that. Good. Uh, what else to talk about in the tree? Yeah, why do we have no mana? This is because I'm using the Blood Magic uh, Keystone, which basically says... Um, you don't have mana at all, but in everything you will reserve, you will reserve on uh, life as well, but therefore you're going to spend. It's like having a blood magic um, support gem in your skill. So every time I'm shooting, as you see, I'm actually dropping life. So um, the next thing is we take mortal conviction, which means we can have one aura and this one will cost no mana, but therefore everything else will cost more. Um, actually, that was actually Supreme Ego. It doesn't matter. But um, one aura you can have and this will, will not reserve any mana. And I said that I'm going for Precision because it is the strongest version. And since we only run one aura, we can actually boost this one up with Empower and Enhance uh, with the Precision and use Supreme Ego to just have way more and more and more accuracy 
Um, and I don't have to worry about my mana cost. I don't have to worry about no re uh, regen because I'm having life gain on hit and stuff like that. There is another option where you could take minus 10 mana cost on both rings on the amulet. You can run a replica conqueror's um, efficiency jewel for minus 9 mana cost. I had this setup running, so I just removed those kill points and went uh, over here and anointed uh, something else than uh, frenetic. I think it was... Um, Arcing Blows for another damage or for tankiness, you could also uh, anoint Discipline and Training, which is pretty nice. But to be honest, it was so much investment and Tornado Shot is a very expensive skill. I think 42 mana cost, which is insane. So as I said, I could get uh, 30 on these and then 39 with the um, Replica and there is still some mana cost missing and I would have to solve that with like synthesized things uh, to have my zero mana cost. But in the end, I said like, it's, it's just not worth it. You know what? I just got Blood Magic and I can use my Precursor Rings, which is a lot, lot, lot more damage than the Synthesized Rings that I had before, so I don't have to worry about it at all. Good, let's go over um, for the um, skill slots here. Cast damage taken setup with Immortal Call. This is because I am Rest Capped, so um, I'm Juggernaut. I will uh, generate Endurance Charges. And the cool thing is, with Endurance Charges, my Immortal Call will last 2.99 seconds, and it has a cooldown of 3 seconds. So basically, I will have Immortal Call up almost all the time. Just a small uh, refresh one um, once it's triggered. And it's soaked up, basically. It has, like, a small uh, cooldown. But all uh, other than that, it will be mostly um, online. And this will give me a no uh, another, like, big layer of defense when it comes to physical damage and elemental damage. Increased duration as well uh, for the Mortal Call duration and Summon Ice Golem. I personally think Summon Ice Golem is a big DPS increase, but this guy dies all the time. So either I have it on Cast Damage Taking or I wouldn't even use it just because, like, holy shit. Like... If he's there, he's there, I get some extra damage. If not, then who cares about it? So that's why I have it on a cost damage taken setup. Then we have a Tornado Shot, Additional Accuracy, GMP, Ali Focus, Lightning Pen, and Ali Damage with Attacks. On my gloves, as I said, the Precision, Super Empowered with Empower and Enhanced Support, and an Anomalous Blood Rage. This is the one that will give me a chance to get a Frenzy Charge on hit. Um, so Tornado Shot can actually generate Frenzy Charges for single target encounters. On my boots, Blink Arrow, Wave of Conviction, and Enduring Cry. Enduring Cry is basically my uh, Life Flask. And then I have a self-cast Wave of Conviction. I used to have that one on Cast Damage taken. But to be honest, the only things where I actually would consider using Wave of Conviction would be like Kosis in 100% Delirious, Maven, Cyrus, any bosses, right? Um, and I don't want to rely on like getting hit to actually proc that, because the lightning exposure will deal a shit ton of amount, like, gives me a lot of damage. So that's why, as soon as Maven gets active, I just use one uh, Wave of Conviction, then just burst it away, because I have so much damage, and that's the the better solution, I would say. Good, um, rest doesn't really matter too much. As I said, the Path of Villain link is in the description below, the map showcase, uh, the 100% Delirious, or if you want to see some bossing action, uh, the 100 Mavens was also done on the accuracy stacking. Uh, what else to um, say about the build, or... I think damage-wise, we explained everything, how accuracy works. I, I personally think everything should be covered. Uh, all the rest here that I've uh, tried out with the, I don't know how many versions do I already have. Like, there's like 20 versions over here, and a lot of these POVs um, are deleted again just because there were so many. I think like 30 or 40 different uh, accuracy stacking where I tried like all kinds of things. I think this was the version without Blood Magic with the minus mana cost, so should be some rear rings over here. Um, that I just explained before, but it's so much investment, I, I just don't think it's uh, necessary at all. And yeah, pretty awesome build. I would definitely recommend trying something like that out. It's maybe uh, not as strong as an in-stacker at some point, um, or maybe deck stacking, bow and stuff like that, but it's a very interesting way to build your character, and sky's the limit. The more currency you invest, the stronger it will get, and it's going to get absolutely ridiculous on a very high uh, level like I played right now. Um, maybe quickly for the cosmetics, this is the complete Frost Viking set that is new with a Mystery Character Effect, Mystery Footprints, the Cold Snap Bow and Quiver, the Frost Viking uh, Cloak, and then we have the Frost Viking Portal Effect, Tornado Shot, this is the typical one. Um, I personally like this one or the black one the most. Um, the purple one looks kind of fancy, but at some point it's just like annoying. It's like satisfying and annoying at the uh, at the same time, which is kind of yeah weird. Then we have Dark Immortal Call, Clockwork Golem Effect, Mystery Aura Effect, 
um, Mystic Blink Arrow, uh, Celestial Warcry, and that's uh, pretty much it. If you have any more questions, um, then please let me know in the comments below. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I think there is nothing else to cover. Alright guys, thanks for tuning in, thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.